first published in 2007 at a cost of £25, this is The Faces of World War I, The Great War in Words and Pictures by Max Arthur. Um, it gives photographically a really good cross section from pre-war all through the war years to the end of the war. Um, difficult to do, obviously, but he selected pictures from the Imperial War Museum's archives. Um, some have been seen before, some may not have been seen before. And he pulls no punches. The pictures are really, in some cases, full page, really good quality close-up pictures. Um, it is worth looking for. I paid £3 for this copy. Really good quality, heavy book. Um, it runs to some 288 pages. As I say, World War One being World War One, there are some very graphic photographs in it. Um, I've here marked one particular favourite photograph, which will strike a chord with many military collectors inside. It's a, it's a really good picture. It's a, it's a very well-known picture as well, but I've, I have earmarked it. So I'll have a flick through the book. The blurb inside reads, For the faces of World War One, Max Arthur has delved into the extensive photography archives of the Imperial War Museum and other important historic collections and brought together a unique pictorial testimony. Extracts from his recorded eyewitness accounts provide a moving commentary to these extraordinary images, many never seen in print before, but quite a few of them have. The faces of World War I portrays late Edwardian Britain before the nation was plunged into war. The images tell the story of the conflict from the events of Sarajevo in 1914, which triggered the outbreak through the slaughter and suffering in the trenches, the final armistice and the soldiers' return. We see not just the British and Allied troops, but the Germans, whose condition so mirrored that of the men set against them. They endured the same hardships they too lived daily with death, depended on their comrades and longed for their homes. This photographic milestone portrays all aspects of the war at the front, the fear, futility, humour and pathos, and the experiences of those left at home. And it is a really, really good book. There's some really nice black and white studies of German troops as well. So we'll take a look through this one. So, The Faces of World War I, The Great War in Words and Pictures by Max Arthur. So we start with this montage of probably unknown people. And it kind of goes through the generic thing. Pre-war, 1914, One's Christmas Truce. 1915, New Chapelle, Gallipoli. 1916, Redun the Somme. 1917, Arras, Cambrai. 1918, Picardy, Armistice and Aftermath. So we start with this really nice picture of a British soldier with a German gun that he's pulled out of the mud. And we have kind of pre-war, kind of everyday life in Britain. And when they say the good old days, I mean, you wouldn't want to go back there for anything. That's, that's the good old days in a British kitchen, getting washed in front of the fire in a tin bath. I can well remember my mum and dad talking about these days. I certainly wouldn't want to go back there. German studies. Big German photograph. It's kind of a nice picture. And all these people are dead. They're actually British troops asleep on Boulogne Harbour, having just arrived in France. We have some British soldiers newly arrived in France. Look to be Northampton, sir, Northamptonshire Regiment in some light infantry. And some of the interesting things about these, and this is what you pick up from period photographs. For some reason, that guy's wearing two cap badges. Yeah. And for some reason, that guy's wearing a, a collar badge, or a, a shoulder title rather, as a cap badge. So is that guy there. 
an upward turned shoulder title being used as a cap badge. A dead German soldier from the first Battle of the Marne. well-known pictures are dotted here and there 1915 again another nice German study new recruits at Bermondsey in London of trench life Both German British first pattern gas masks now these gas masks were soaked in a, a kind of fluid but it only gave five minutes protection against gas. And you have Gallipoli. Then went to nineteen sixteen. German rat catches. Thirteenth Royal Fusilier is celebrating with various souvenirs. That of Pauline, pickle halves, German bayonets, German Model Ten field caps. A couple of French soldiers in there as well. Three wounded British soldiers coming from Dern Dernan Court, September 1916. And one of them still got his souvenir German helmet on his head. These are dead horses being thrown into an open pit. As I say, the mag, I mean the book, pulls no punches. Tells it like it was. Nineteen seventeen. And this is favourite picture. This guy is John Barney Hines, an Anzac sol soldier after the Battle of Polygon Wood. Now known as the Souvenir King, says the blurb down there. Known as the Souvenir King, he was born in Liverpool of Irish descent. He served in the Boxer Rebellion in China before seeing action in the Boer War. He then emigrated to Australia, where at the outbreak of the Great War, despite being aged over 40, he succeeded in joining the army. Once at the Western Front, he refused to use a rifle, preferring to carry sand two sandbags full of hand grenades. As a result of his penchant for taking items from German corpses, the Kaiser placed Heinz on his personal wanted list. Nevertheless, he survived the war. So this is Heinz with all his souvenir German items. A 
all these bits and pieces they took off dead Germans and then we carry on through into 1918 the German Springs Offensive and a supposedly head-on combat photograph showing the action of a German about to hurl a stick grenade supposedly taken at Villers Bretonneur in April as Hindenburg's 18th Army overran Allied lines near the Somme but is it real or is it posed because that's the close-up and what the publishers of the book may have forgotten is later on in the book the same picture appears there look. so that there is the same picture but you see the actual picture now and it's actually I think it's a training picture with French dressed as Germans I don't think that's an actual combat picture. And here we have the first American dead, the US Pioneer Regiment, March 1918. The negatives had the faces scratched out on them. But lying right there is a Lewis gun. And that's what? Seven, eight thousand pounds to a collector nowadays. Lying in the mud. is the armistice this is the kind of aftermath when the soldiers came home this guy has been wounded between the eyes by a piece of time fuse which went through his forehead and it lodged in the uh, side of his cheek so they made him a prosthetic wax mold to go over his face kind of pioneering plastic surgery that's another one putting in place and paint it up and this is these men fell at the edge of a wood near Nananvu where they lay until the following year's thaw revealed their bodies then the body of the unknown warrior which is kind of part truth part propaganda And we have Vimy War Memorial being sandblasted, unveiling of the cenotaph, and he kind of poignantly finishes the last photograph in the book. Is this one from 2001? In June 2001, 20 bodies were unearthed near Arras. The skeletons lie arm in arm and are still wearing their boots. They are the men of the Grimsby Chums, perhaps some of the same men pitched in cloth caps on page 41 of this book. They all died together on Easter Monday, 1917. These are just some of the three quarters of a million British men who perished in the Great War. So rather poignantly, it finishes with that photograph. So really good quality book. That's the faces of World War I, the Great War in words and pictures by Max Arthur.